and welcome to the Paint Along, the new series on Art Nouveau where you can paint along with me in real time while I answer your most important questions. Now, today's episode is actually part two or a little follow up to my first episode because um, I had a bunch of questions that I didn't have a chance to get to and I still wanna answer those for you. So we left off working on my Medusa painting, which we're going to continue on today. So go get your art supplies, your sketchbook, paints, colored pencils, whatever you wanna to use today. Put down your iPhone, turn off your Facebook, and let's just work together for the next 30 or 45 minutes and get some art made. Okay, so let's get started. I'm rolling my camera, ta-da! Okay, I'm going into my little box. Um, and last we saw, I was about to do my second transfer, which I have now done. So um, if you saw the last episode, you'll see that I'm actually doing two transfers, one to get sort of her form on there, and then I do a second transfer to get some of these details. So um, there you can see um, the graphite has transferred to the board, and I'm going to go ahead and um, probably darken this in a little bit so um, I can actually see what I'm going to be painting here. And in the meantime, I will get to work and start answering those questions. It's also um, happy hour over in these parts, so I've got a little tasty beverage with me. And my answers to the questions will probably get more and more honest as time progresses. So if you're at the end, lucky you, because I'm going to be a little more loosened up by then. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we got here. Mm. Art Glug asks, what would you be doing if you weren't an artist? Any other interests? Um, uh, you know what? That's hard to say because I've like always been an artist in some way or form. Um, but I would probably be doing some other kind of job that I probably wouldn't like as much. But I was really interested, um, as a kid, I really liked to write my own stories and stuff. Um, I made my own graphic novels, I made my own children's books, I even wrote little short stories and stuff. Um, actually, <laughs> when I was in high school, I wrote a little short fiction for um, a contest, and it, it got voted by my class of probably about 800 kids as the best um, fiction story. So I got a little award, and it was really awesome. So. I would probably want to pursue writing, possibly, um, but <laughs> as far as I know, I think writing is actually even harder of a career to pursue than being an artist, so I don't know. I feel like, at least if you're an artist, it's like a little bit easier to like stand out in some way, but writing is, writing is tough, but yeah, I don't know. I would still love to combine it, that's for sure, um, do writing and art. Um, I also really liked teaching. I I used to make my sister play school all the time, so she probably like hates me for that. But yeah, so I guess everything comes full circle because now I'm going to be teaching my online class soon. So yeah, um, I have lots of interests. I used to dance. I took ballet, tap, jazz. I took modern in college. Um, really liked it a lot, but I was definitely not good enough to be professional of any kind. So so no, but I am getting back into it. Um, a little rusty since I haven't uh, done it for a few years, but yeah, I do. I love dancing. Um, all right, let's see what else we have. Royalty Nat Nat asks, "What's your favorite medium to work with?" And also, if anyone who inspired you to start drawing in the first place. Ooh. Um, well, my favorite medium is acrylic, which you guys probably already know. Although I really do love watercolor as well. Um, as far as, oh, if anyone inspired you to start drawing in the first place, I can actually answer that. Um, and hold on, I have, I have this. Um, so I, just take a moment here. Um, but the first, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with this series called Serendipity Books. And this is the, the big one, the hardcover. And the illustrator, Robin James, just, she is the reason that I became an artist, like for real. And um, in college, I actually wrote her a letter and I just said how much I loved her illustrations and um, told her that I was studying illustration because of her. And she sent me this hardcover book 
and um, actually signed it for me as well and wrote, Dear Leilani, wishing you much serendipity in your career as an illustrator. I remain sincerely yours, Robin James. And yeah, that almost makes me like get choked up because it's so um, sentimental to me. Um, but if you have never seen these books, I think they're a little bit hard to come by now. But if you have kids or if you just like, like, fabulous, wonderful stories about little animals learning lessons that I highly recommend serendipity books. Um, yeah, they just, they're amazing. And that, that is really my first ever inspiration. Okay, um, Creatures from Starlight would like to, oh, hi, Creatures from Starlight. How are you, girl? You doing good? Um, she asked, would you recommend first doing fan art to get a following? A lot of people have been telling me you can't get by on your own original artwork unless you do enough fan art to get a decent following. I don't per personally believe this, but I can't help but wonder if it would make things easier. Oh, goodness. Um, well, I kind of talked about this on my, um, my last Paint Along video, um, but the truth, the truth of the matter is, you know, like I said, um, people like something that they're familiar with. Um, most people tend to be drawn to characters, to stories that they already recognize. I know it like kind of sucks, but like, I mean, I see people on Instagram all the time that just draw Disney fan art and they have like hundreds of thousands of followers. And I don't, I don't really understand it. Like, I mean, I have like 7,000 followers, which I'm totally fine with, but like, I don't understand what good it does to do tons of fan art um, that you can't sell. Um, if you are selling it, I would suggest you be very careful since it is copyrighted. Um, but I would say this, I guess my advice to you would be um, to use sparingly. Um, obviously, you know, Certain popular characters are going to get more attention, um, maybe get you some more looks. But again, I, if you prefer to do your own original artwork, then don't, you know, don't do it just because someone tells you to or you think you should, you know, like I just sometimes fan art is fun to do. I like to do it myself from time to time, but I definitely don't think artists should rely on it. I think it can be a gimmick. Um, and then when you have to do something for like an art show where you have to come up with an original concept, then you can't. And I think, um, a lot of artists fall into a trap where they learn, um, they get really good at copying something and then they don't have any of their own ideas. So I would say, um, a happy medium, a little bit of both might be good, but definitely don't, don't become a fan art artist. I just think that's kind of like... I don't know, I, I feel like you owe it to yourself to put some of your own creativity in it or it defeats the whole purpose. So hopefully that, that answer helps. But yeah, the truth is some of those fan artists, they have so many followers and it's just like, okay, like how many times are you gonna draw the little mermaid and directly copy it and people are like thinking that's so great. I don't know, no tea, no shade. Um, next I have, uh, Mandy Lynn Art. Um, do you ever regret being an artist, freelance ar slash freelance artist, because of financial issues, or was it worth your, was it worth following your dreams? Uh, hmm. Um, wow, a loaded question. Um, yes, <laughs> I regret it like every other day. No, no, not really, but. It is very stressful at times. Um, obviously, like I think I've mentioned this before, artists generally don't become artists for the money, okay? It's just a fact of life. I mean, unless you are someone who becomes extremely successful, um, it's usually not that um, profitable of a career. So I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, most of the time I do it. I love it. I, I'm so grateful to get to do what I love doing. 
But again, there are times where I'm like, wow, I have a lot of bills and I didn't have that great of a month. And that can be very, very stressful. Um, anyone that works commission-based jobs or um, jobs where it's like not steady income, it's it can be scary. And it's definitely um, not for those who aren't willing to take a risk. So if you... Are feel better safer having an in-house job of some kind there are artist jobs um, for people who want nine to fives I mean my boyfriend he has done both he's done freelance um, for films and concept art but right now he's working for an in-house game company and he's got a, a nice nine to five that he can rely on and um, it's great so there's there's definitely both depending on what type of person you are or you know where you're at in your career too so I got a little bit sidetracked on that but no overall I don't regret it I feel like it is what I'm meant to do um, most of the time it makes me really happy other times I'm crying and being like why why am I doing this but I, I would say like probably most most artists are in that same boat so yeah hopefully that answers it for you okay Anna Estra asks how long do you study and work on your art? Um, forever. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Like, how long does it take to get a degree in art? I mean, it takes about the same time as um, any other degree. It took me a little bit longer because um, the classes are so dense. Um, but if you mean, like, how long does it take to, like, master your craft i i think most artists would say never I, I i think most artists are never truly satisfied i mean that's kind of like part of our plight and part of our genius i guess that we're always seeking that so yeah never never stop learning never stop growing i guess just keep challenging yourself keep studying trying to keep trying to improve so that's my Non-philosophical answer and philosophical answer. So hopefully I covered the bases on that. Okay. CM Spencer 13. What is the best way to start selling artwork as a teenager? Don't. <laughs> just kidding. I don't want the competition. No, just kidding. Um, man, I guess if you're selling artwork as a teenager, like you're like way ahead of the game. Uh, I certainly wasn't selling anything. Um, um, Etsy, open an Etsy store, see what happens. Um, also, you know, why not? I'm sure that you have like arts and craft fairs in your area. Um, sign up for one. The only problem is though, like at your age, unless you have a, a part-time job or a parent that's willing to like put up some money, um, it's kind of difficult to like get your own prints made and things like that um it costs money like my printer my first printer my parents did buy me and it was like eight hundred dollars and they were like okay you know pay us back but we'll get you started so if they're willing to help you out with that um awesome but i i definitely understand that uh it's kind of um hard when you don't uh, aren't like earning your own capital um when i first started i had um a couple of part-time jobs and everything i made went towards rent, food, and art supplies, so that's where I was at. Um, but yeah, I you could, you know, put your stuff on Etsy, just see if you get some nibbles, you know, just sell your originals if you want. It can't hurt. It's so easy to sell online. I think you probably do need a bank account, though, so you might have to have your parents, like, sign up for you. I don't, I'm not really sure, but don't get too ahead of yourself, you know. Take time to, to learn, to to um, improve your craft before you worry too much about the selling part, okay? Like, that that does take a little bit longer to get to that point. Um, I kind of messed up this finger here, so kind of, well, I guess it looks okay. Yep, yeah, I'll just kind of flesh it out. Um, okay, e Ryu ate some pizza. Ooh, pizza. Pizza sounds good. Um, how old were you when you decided to become an artist? I, I already answered this. I didn't decide, guys. I didn't decide to become an artist for real. Like, I was a kid. 
drawing all the time. It was not a, a decision for me. It was kind of like a decision whether I wanted to torture myself and try and do it as a living, um, which I decided probably, uh, I guess, in high school. But, yeah, I, I wasn't like an age where I'm like, oh, I think I'll be an artist. It was just what I did. Um, so, yeah. Um, Alejandro Art. Out of all the different hairstyles throughout the years, which was your favorite? <laughs> this one. No. Um, oh, gosh. I don't know. I really liked my blue hair. It was super fun. And the magenta, actually. Um, but both of them stained my shower super bad. Um, but they were, yeah, I still, I want to go back to colored hair. I'm actually thinking I want to do the, like, gray, like, silver ombre. I thought it was pretty cool. That... Um, episode on my blog recently, it was a hair, it was a hair piece. I didn't do it yet, uh, but I really liked it. But probably by the time I do it, it'll be off trend. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Dyeing your hair like destroys it so bad. Um, I really did like, I really love that, um, like a line bob I used to do like years ago. It was like long in the front and like short in the back. It was a really cute haircut, but it was like, I, you know, the only bad thing about it was like, I had to get it cut like every six weeks and like I couldn't afford my stylist and I don't know I couldn't put it up so I don't know I wish I could just wear wigs like drag queens because I love different hair I'd love to have like rainbow hair but I just I don't think my poor hair could take it if I tried to bleach it again it would probably just fall out <laughs> just break off okay well that was a much more long-winded answer than necessary okay woolly butt Wooly butt designs. Do you think you'll ever do a tarot card deck? Oh, God. Like, just the thought of doing that many illustrations, like, <laughs> makes me tired. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if someone paid me to do one, probably. Um, but, yeah, like, right now, it's just not really feasible because um, it's just a huge amount of work. And I can't um, really devote that much time to it because I don't really know how profitable it would be. You know, you guys, this is a business lesson right here. You kind of have to take um, your time into account when you do things because it, it really does matter. Um, efficiency and making sure that you're spending your time wisely. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, um, I've seen some really cool ones. Uh, a friend of mine and, um, Tanya Bond, she's, she's an awesome artist. She's in my bad apple group. She's working on one. I think she just, um, did a Kickstarter for it and it looks gorgeous. I I'm going to buy one, but I just, I don't know if I can, devote that much time to it because there's a lot of cards like I was thinking of doing even playing cards too because I've seen some really cool like artistic playing cards but again I just uh, I don't know it's um it would be a pretty huge undertaking maybe I could kick start it or something but <laughs> I have to finish uh my last kickstarter project before I start any new ones so I don't know sorry Willie, but not really sure okay so at this stage, I'm gonna um, start mixing some colors to match my snakes here. So I'm gonna um, kind of have a couple colors semi going. And usually, what I do when I have a color comp like this, I just print it out and I just kind of paint some samples right off to the side. And it looks like I'm already probably pretty close um, to kind of what I want here. So I'm probably just going to start kind of um, doing a um, just one flat color on the snakes and then I'll fill in some of these depth areas with um, a darker green later. All right, so here we go. Um, where was I? All right, so um, Alpha Komen, Alf Okomen <laughs> asks, who are your other muses in art? And if ever, would you make a painting of any of said muses? Um, well, I paint, you know, all my paintings are my muses, I feel like. So every painting I do is a new muse of mine. Um, but a couple in particular that I've been um, looking forward to doing that are on my to-do list, I guess uh, if I say this, you guys are gonna like hold me to it. Um, 
but I really want to do a Frida inspired piece. Um, maybe Tank Girl. I'm very inspired by um, the comics and that character. Um, I, oh, and one of them that's really big for me that I'm hoping to do soon is um, Sailor Moon. And I know it, it's technically like kind of fan art, um, but I don't know, everyone's doing their fan art stuff now. So I definitely want to do that and maybe some of the Sailor Scouts as well if I, if I um, have time. So yeah, those are just a few. I have, oh gosh, I have so many. I really do. Um, but uh, you're just going to have to wait and see on that one, see which one comes up next. Um, next, I have a question from Brandy Abroad. Brandy asks, what's one painting you tried to do and couldn't make it work? Um, uh, I have a lot of those. <laughs> um, but I guess one, a, a couple that recently that you guys would know of is um, that piece that I was working on for the Bad Apple Artist Collective, the, the girl with the pearl earring. Um, I started it and I just kept forcing it and forcing it and I was just like absolutely hating it the entire way and yeah eventually I just decided to start over and frankly um, I actually start over um, more often than I would like to admit to um, but a lot of times you guys don't see that because sometimes it just gets thrown away and never actually goes anywhere um, so yeah i don't know sometimes exactly it just doesn't work and for whatever reason i guess i would also say that a lot of times i finish a piece and i just am not fully satisfied i would say uh, i don't know maybe like something like 70 percent of the time i find that my own pieces are not exactly what I wanted when I saw it in my head and I guess that's just how artists are right we just we're our own worst critics I suppose so wow this this paint quality oh, see this is what I bought I went cheapo and got this crappy one the other day because I was um I don't know I just wanted to try it it's a different brand and it sucks it's really thin and awful and I'm gonna have to do like 20 coats of this so there's a, a lesson for you guys too today um, if you can buy better paint, then do it because otherwise it's super annoying and you have to keep going over it so um, it doesn't look thin and crappy. Okay, oops, it looks like I missed um, one question from Instagram so quickly. Let me see. Um, from Cinda Lion, she asks, how did you find your style and could you give us any tips on skin painting, blending, etc.? Um, I already think, I think I already answered this style question. Um, or I said it on the last video um, just repetition literally just doing it over and over again learning fr from each piece um, something I liked something I didn't like and just keep doing it I, I feel like I'm whoops, I'm a firm believer in um, your style comes naturally I don't feel like you can force it unless you copy somebody and I don't um, recommend that I think um, your style is based on um, a variety of your influences and it just like kind of just happens. So it's, um, I wish, I mean, I'm talking to my like 19 year old self here. Um, like I said, I was very lost and I didn't know how I fit in, but I just kept doing it and adapting over time. And that's how I got to what I do now. I just do what I like and um, pull influence from a lot of different sources. So that's my answer to that. Um, do I have any tips on skin painting? Um, yeah, actually I have another video that has some really good advice about that. Um, so let's see here, here's the link to it. Um, so just go ahead and check that out. I have a little demo because a lot of people ask me about um, painting skin tones. So I had some um, tips there that you can find. So hopefully that helps you. Okay, so let's move over to the, do the Facebook questions because I have a few of these as well. And hopefully we can get through them while I continue painting my snakies. Can I just say that these are so fun to paint so far because it's like 
just like taking paint and just smearing like a smooth like curved line <laughs> I don't know art art nerd here but I just like it feels really good to just like um, make these strokes of these um, smooth curved lines it's just I find it very enjoyable Okay, um, Jennifer Hughes asks, I'm a second semester junior and art school painting major. Do you have any advice for thesis year? Um, thesis year, I don't, I don't know. We didn't have a thesis year, so I don't really know. We didn't have like a final, final project like that. Um, yeah. Sorry, Jennifer, I just find, I find your question like a little too broad. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I would just say like, don't kill yourself. <laughs> no, for real. Um, like, don't, don't feel like this is like the end all be all because I will say this, I was not prepared to enter a professional art career when I finish school. I don't know, hopefully your, um, your school is preparing you more. Um, but I did a lot, probably more learning and growing um, just through trial and error and in my professional career outside of school. So I guess I would just say enjoy it, you know, just like do whatever inspires you and just keep doing it. And you're, you still have a lot of learning left to do, so don't feel like school is, is the end-all be-all. So I don't really know if that's that great of advice. It's, it's kind of hard um, to give you specific advice. Um, Michael H. asks, what do you most like to watch while creating your amazing work? Um, well, thank you, Michael. Thank you very much, first of all. Um, okay, this, this is kind of embarrassing for real, um, but my favorite thing to watch is like Lifetime and Forensic Files and, um, all those crime shows on Netflix. Like, I know that's like really weird and lame, but I like shows that are like, like mysteries because I don't have to like. Usually they have like a really great narrator for one thing and I don't have to look up that often because it's hard to watch something that's like um, mostly visual, right, when it's when you're trying to paint. So I find that those like crime documentaries are always like really good, like exciting, like mysteries and they have like a great narration. So I like cheesy crime shows. I just found FBI files recently and I'm really into those. Those are really, those are great. Those are really good. Um, I also really, I like audiobooks. I haven't um, listened to one in a while because I let my um, uh, subscription to Audible expire. Um, but those are really great to paint to because basically you're reading while working. So it's not get any better than that. Um, I don't know. I like to watch Disney movies sometimes. I also like to listen to um, like artist interviews those are like kind of interesting to see how other people do it I also find that like inspiring so yeah that's that's kind of what I watch and listen to sometimes I'll um watch a show I've seen a lot already um because that's kind of fun to just have in the background because you already kind of know what happens you don't have to like watch it that close um so Selma N asks how do you feel about critiques and criticism from fans? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about this particular subject lately um, in my Bad Apple group as well. Um, we've run into a lot of this and I don't know what it is lately. I don't like, I'm at the risk of sounding like an old lady. Um, in my day, <laughs> in my day, before we had things like Twitter and Facebook and all this, like you had to like say things to people's faces. And I feel like that like eliminated a lot of this like hate and complaining mentality and negative. I didn't like this. I don't like that. And I just feel like, I mean, this is so, kind of a sidebar, but uh, I just feel like we, a lot of people nowadays just feel like they can say anything they want whenever they want 
um, and have no real consequences. Um, if I was, um, you know, when I was an art student or, you know, before I was a professional, I would never, <laughs> okay, I mean, no offense, but I would never tell a professional artist that I looked up to, like, that their anatomy was wrong or that their color scheme didn't make sense or that I would never critique them or criticize them at all um, just because I, I, I just would feel like that's um, disrespectful. Um, but yeah, I get people hating on me all the time and I'm kind of like, okay, like I don't really, I didn't ask you. <laughs> okay, this is kind of a joke, but um, I was saying like, okay, I might start this trend now from now on <laughs> whenever I get an unsolicited, like, nasty critique. I'm just going to post this picture. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. <laughs> and if you don't know what that's from, then you're just, you're too young to understand. But um, it just makes me laugh every time. Okay, but to, to answer it more seriously, um, hey, you know, it's great to get criticism it's it's great to grow from comments. However, um, I personally um, don't take this the wrong way. Um, not to meant to be snotty in any way, um, but I have a lot of friends who are professional artists. Uh, my boyfriend is a professional artist who I I look up to, and I have a lot of uh, I have a network of people that um, and and the Bad Apple Artist Group, are all professional artists as well. I have a pretty good network of professionals who I feel are my peers and I um, appreciate and respect their opinions. So when I want feedback and critique, I have a lot of people that I can go to for that. So um, I feel in this way for any artist who's putting their work online, it, you know, it, it takes some guts to do it. It takes some guts to put yourself out there. And unless the artist is specifically requesting a critique, I personally don't think it's polite to give them one, um, especially if it's a finished piece um, that they've like already sold or it's for uh, you know a freelance thing or something. As in, as in, your critique will have no effect whatsoever on the final piece. They've already submitted it, it's already done. They're not gonna go back and change it. It's not an in-progress piece. I just feel like it's not necessary. Like, if you can't say something nice, say nothing at all. Um, so I just, I'm kind of in the, the ballpark that, um, you know, unless someone asks you what you think, just keep it to yourself. So that is kind of my feeling on it. And uh, I know that's that doesn't always happen. And there's a lot of people in the the group that says well if you put it online if you expose it if you put it out there you're asking for criticism i don't necessarily agree with that i don't know you're going to get it whether you like it or not but like i said i would not go up to audrey kawasaki and say by the way your hand is too big it looks weird i would never ever say that to her face so i would never write that on her instagram i would never write that on her Facebook page. So maybe, okay, rule of thumb, if you wouldn't go up to this person and say it to their face, if you don't feel that you could do that, don't write it on their page. There, so that was kind of long-winded, but I do kind of, it, it's it's a um, controversial question and I'm getting a little more tipsy and I'm <laughs> starting to elaborate and be really honest about this kind of thing. Okay, um, Jane W. How do you cope with not so nice feedback <laughs> and not take it personally from both casual observers and fellow professionals? Well, uh, crazy Jane. <laughs> Jane, get me off this crazy thing. <laughs> More vintage cartoon jokes. Oh, I think I addressed this a little bit just now already. Um, I get a lot of it, um, like I said, and you just kind of have to consider the source. Like, if some 10-year-old says, like, your art is crappy, then what do they know, okay? I mean, they don't know anything. And even if they are a professional and they, like, give you um, a bad 
critique, it's not the the end of the world, you know? You got to take it with a grain of salt. I know that, like, this really sounds cliche, and in a way it is, because for real, I, I'm, I'm a really sensitive person, and when I, like... You know, yeah, I'm on YouTube. I'm putting myself out there. But it hurts when people, like, tell you you're horrible and you talk too much and you have horse teeth and whatever. Like, it hurts your feelings. And I've had days where I had to have my, you know, sister or my boyfriend, like, talk me down and just be like, don't listen to that crap. They don't matter. There's some troll sitting out there um, feeling better about themselves because they put someone down. And I don't do that, and I just don't feel it's a good use of your energy. So, you know, take it in stride, but don't let it stop you. I guess I would. that's what I would say. I don't let it stop me. I know there's people that don't like what I do, that don't think um, I am up to their standard. And I don't really care, okay? I, I make my living doing what I love doing. And I have, you know, really good things in my life. And, um, so it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it too much. Go, go punch a pillow for a half an hour and just be like, okay, whatever. I'm going to do what I want anyways. <laughs> um, Amanda B. I'm really curious how did, how you got to create art for Disney? What sort of process did you have to go through to work with them? Oh, um, Amanda, I'm glad you asked this question because I've, I've um, actually gotten this question a lot and it's a short answer, unfortunately. And that is, um, it's kind of, it's an invite only type situation. Um, they found me through my, I think Etsy and YouTube. I think they saw my work on Etsy first. Um, and they sent me like a very, very, um, brief email about, you know, are you interested in a possible, a possible thing with Disney? And then I had to sign like eight co contracts, NDAs, or non-disclosure agreements and all this stuff before they even told me anything. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what to advise because they don't have any kind of submission process. Um, they, they just look for artists that they feel would be a good fit. Um, so I think it's kind of random. I would just say, um, keep working as hard as you can. I do know this though. I have noticed that they have not chose, they don't choose artists that do Disney fan art. So remember what I said, fan art can hurt you. This is a really good example of that. Um, they don't choose artists that are, um, stealing their copyrighted characters. They d definitely seem to look for artists who have um, unique styles. Um, so if you guys don't know, I am talking about Wonderground Gallery specifically because that is who I work with. Um, but look at the artists that they do have. So there's me, there's Jasmine Beckett Griffith, there's Jeremiah Kentner, um, there's all these other artists there. So they try to pick people, um, who are, are unique. Miss Mindy, Liana He. Um, Brittany Lee, yeah, look up all these people and then, you know, don't copy them because obviously they are choosing people who are um, unique. Um, they like artists that are different from one another. So if that, that helps, I can't really say for sure, like I said, because um, I didn't apply to work with them. It just, it just happened, which was kind of a fluke thing, actually. Okay, um, Alice L. asks, I know this isn't art related, but have you finished Mass Effect 3 yet? Oh, and have you gotten to the Leviathan DLC? Yes and yes. <laughs> oh no, I can't go here. I don't have the time. I'll have to do like a separate Mass Effect discussion. Um, Mass Effect... Garrus and um, Grunt here are with me, as always. Um, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. You guys know this. If I could marry Garrus in real life, I probably would. Um, I, uh, I'm i in the boat of the people who were devastated by the end of Mass Effect 3. 
I can't really go there. <laughs> For real. Like, my boyfriend and I have had long, long discussions about that game. Um, why they made the choices that they made, I don't know. Um, if you haven't played it, I won't really spoil it for you, but it's just very weird. Um, but I will say this to you, Alice, since you are obviously a fan as well. Um, the Leviathan DLC was freaking awesome. I actually, the DLCs, I'm not even going to say it. They didn't make up for the ending, but they, they did, they, they were good. They were really, really good. Um, really liked the Leviathan DLC a lot. Um, I played all the DLCs. Um, and I will say that the Citadel DLC is my favorite thing ever. And I, I'm working on a second playthrough of Mass Effect. And what I'm going to do, which I've heard some people do, is actually um, play Mass Effect 3 normally. And then before you go to the um, Cerberus base or wh whatever the last um, like level is, um, you just play the Citadel DLC as the final mission <laughs> and it makes it so much, so much better. And then you can sleep at night and not slit your wrists. All right. So that answers that question. Um, Andrea S. asks, do you know the webcomic Ava's Demon from Michelle Kazajowski? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, I, I know I totally butchered that name. I have not. I'm sorry. I haven't. Um, but I, maybe I'll look into it after this. Um, um, Andrea also asks, which is your favorite history artist? Oh, gosh. Um, I have a lot of those. I, I mean, how old? Does it matter? Um, I am a gigantic Mooka fan. I just, I don't know. I think... Um, Alphonse Mucha has the, some of the best design sensibilities ever, um, the way he uses curves and shapes, and I'm just so, so envious of that, um, in my own work, I'm a big fan of him. Um, I really like Erte, I recently, I know that's, like, not that old, um, but I, I just really like also his use of graphic shapes. Um, I, I like, um, Frida Kahlo, which I'm actually really wanting to do a tribute piece to her. Um, I don't know. I have a lot. I have a lot of them for, for, for different reasons probably, but those, those ones kind of, um, jump to mind for me. Um, oh, <laughs> Andrea also asks, of all the m mystic creatures, which is your favorite? Uh... I feel like it's rather obvious, but it's definitely a unicorn. <laughs> That's probably the easiest um, answer, easiest question I've had so far. So I think that is it for the questions, which I'm really excited because I feel like I hopefully got to most of you. Um, I think, oh, I, wait, I have one more that just came in from Instagram that I will try to answer really quickly. Um, Yes, so this is from XX Donna X, and she asked me, um, do, do, do. she asked, what type of bases do you use when drawing people, and if you could paint in only one color, what would it be? Um, and by bases, she means when you start drawing a person, do you use basic shapes for the beginning and then add an outline? Um... Hmm. I'm not like super clear on what she um what you're asking me. Um I don't draw shapes and then an outline. Um I I was taught like the classical method of like um figure drawing. So just interpreting the shapes as you see them, um using the um idea of um proportions, so like People are usually between six and eight heads tall, um, you know, that, that kind of formula. So that's the way I was taught to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure if that answers your question, but that is the method that I was trained on and what I use. 
Oh, again, I'm going to have to use so many coats of this paint, but I am kind of digging the colors, though. I think it's really fun, and I like this bright, limey color that I have. It's, it's looking pretty cool. I'm going to have fun doing a little bit of um, texture on these snakes as well. Okay, and I'm sorry. Um, she also asked me, um, and if you could paint in only one color, what would it be? Um, it would be aqua. It would be something like this color uh, right here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Everything I have is aqua. I love aqua. I like mint and aqua. I'm just very into like um, kind of like pastel-y blue-greens. I don't know. Favorite color, definitely. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you had fun on this um, new episode of Le Lottie Joy's Paint Along. I hope you created something cool. If you did, please share it with me at hashtag Leilani Look, and I will check it out, or at least I'll really try to. Um, sometimes I can't get back to everybody, but I'll try to see what you created on the Paint Along. So thanks for watching, guys. I will have a full episode of this finished piece for you super soon and um, keep those questions coming hopefully i can answer more of them on another episode of the paint along i hope you guys enjoyed it and had some of your mysteries solved i will see you guys next time bye